I tried over 20 different physical slash mineral sunscreens so that you don't have to, and I am rating them by Whitecast. To help you find a sunscreen that protects your skin, cares for it, but also doesn't make you flash back or look like Casper. We know that sunscreen is the most important step of a skincare routine, but one of the hardest things to get people to use sunscreen is the fact that it flashes back, it looks pasty, it feels greasy, and it's just overall not always the most pleasant experience. There are some amazing sunscreens, especially coming out of Korea and from other places. However, chemical slash organic sunscreens have a tendency to burn my open acne lesions, and there is some fear about them being absorbed into the bloodstream. We've actually done videos on this before to help break down the science of that. And the truth is that you shouldn't be scared of sunscreen. Wearing some sunscreen is better than wearing none. However, I fully understand people who want to avoid the chemical slash organic subtypes and want to stick with the mineral slash physical. But what are you supposed to do if you don't want to be looking like Casper? Well, my wonderful skin intellectual, you watch this video. You take notes and together we break down these formulas so that you can see what's best for your skin. And although I am rating these based on white cast, I'm also throwing in nuggets of what are in these formulas and whose skin type they will be best for. So skipping to the end won't necessarily mean that you're getting a flash free sunscreen because we're also talking tints. So all that being said, let's get started with one of the worst that I personally don't recommend unless you're really trying to save money and you're honestly trying to pull a Mark Zuckerberg. I wonder if this is what he's using. This is the Think Sport sunscreen. It's the SPF 50 plus, which again, amazing sun protection, amazing ingredients. But this is, this is so pasty. I would only recommend this for the body. Thank goodness there is a good amount. This brand has a lot of other sunscreens that I would recommend more because honey, this is not it. One out of 10 for the body, fine. But for the face, I do not recommend. <laughs> then this is so painful. Elta MD is a very much loved skincare line with amazing formulas, dermatologists recommend them, and everyone loves their sunscreen. And while they do have a few sunscreens that are mentioned later in this video, this one is just not it. This is the UV Active Broad Spectrum SPF 50 Plus. It is the water resistant full body sunscreen. And let me tell you, do not put this anywhere other than your body. This is so pasty. I have tried to use it, but it makes you look corpse casket dead. And trust me, I love myself a little bit of what's on V's face and I can get along with a casket crowd if I want to, but for day-to-day -day use, especially if you're trying to learn to put a sunscreen into your routine and trying to take care of your skin and love it and respect it and protect it the way it protects you, this is not going to be your best friend. For the body, fine. For the price even, it's a little bit more expensive. There is another one that this brand makes that is much better, and this one is a hard pass, like the three-day-old nachos that 7-Eleven sells at the gas station. Hard pass. Now this next one is just painful, especially because of the admiration and the high expectations that I had for it. Dr. Sam is a dermatologist here on YouTube. She's a cosmetic dermatologist from the UK and her skincare line is bomb diggity. It is one of the better parts of 2020. It is the Flawless Gossamer, Gossamer? I don't know if it's Gossamer or Gossamer, but it's the untinted. And this was supposed to be a non-flashback sunscreen. It's supposed to be the non-nano form of what her line provides. And again, the ingredients are fantastic, but when you put this on the skin, it's like it poops out cotton chunks, and then the cotton chunks just don't melt into the skin. I'm hoping that I didn't get like an old or like a bad batch, but it's almost like the phases within the cosmetic manufacturing in this didn't blend in together. And I had such high expectations because I wanted to love it, but it is just paste city bitch, paste paste city bitch, 10, 10, 10, 20s on your zygomatic process, bitch, because of the fact that this is a lot of money and it's very pasty for what it is. The Shea Butter makes a great moisturizer and if you don't mind looking pasty, then go for it. But overall, this did not meet the mark. <laughs> then we get into the sunscreens where if you actually start to rub them in, you can make them work. This one is from Meow Meow Tweet. Something that I love about this brand outside of the adorable sunbathing kitten. It says that it's an SPF 25 a silky lotion for face and body. It is silky and it definitely is a lotion, but this is kind of your typical SPF. Now they do get bonus brownie points because this packaging is both recyclable and refillable. I believe that you can send this back to the company and they reprocess and recycle it. Their whole line is very much eco-friendly and they're trying to do zero waste but do you see how this comes out it comes out as a shred of like I don't know, this is a cross between Parmesan and ricotta cheese and trust me it doesn't blend in any better it is chunky it is funky 
it is paste. And I do not recommend putting this on your face. Again, if you really, really rub at this, you can kind of get it to blend in. You know, you, you can kind of make it work, but when it comes to using this every day, it's just, it's just not all there. If you wanna do it on your chest, if you wanna do it shoulders or back, fine. The good thing is that the ingredients in here should be safe for people to use it kind of on this area, especially if you're prone to breakouts. However, the rest of it, just not it. And then it's an SPF 25, so ideally you would reapply this multiple times a day, and I just can't imagine trying to smear this into my skin multiple times a day. It's like trying to work with cheesy Play-Doh putty. Like, melt Play-Doh putty into your skin. Haha, -ha, good luck! Again, kudos to them for the eco-friendliness, for using jojoba. Definitely love it for those reasons. There's even a little bit of lactic acid in here. I believe that's for penetration. But overall, this was not my favorite. Next, this is one that I have loved dearly, but they're actually reformulating it, I believe because even though it's good, it's not the best of the best. And again, if you rub this in, you can make it work. You know, I grew up with this type of sunscreen, so anything that wasn't immediate Casper was already better for me. But you know, as I've grown, as I've learned more, as I've tried Korean skincare, and as I've tried $50 bottles of skincare, I realize that there are differences. This is one that I still love, but is still a little bit pasty. This is the Amavara SPF 30 UVA UVB Transparent Mineral Sunscreen. And when I originally bought this, probably, what, three or four years ago is when I was introduced to them. I looked at it, I thought, okay, transparent mineral sunscreen, safe for sensitive skin. I pumped it out, I was like, okay, I can make this work. And again, when you rub it in, eventually, maybe you can get it to be transparent, but it is not the most transparent of them out there. It definitely needs a little bit of love and a little bit of elbow grease, but you can get it into your pores, you know, and the good thing is that it is safe for sensitive skin and it is water resistant for up to 80 minutes. So is it an option for the beach? Definitely. Do I love the size? Yes. I think it's this one again that they are reformulating because of probably that little bit of pastiness. I'm hoping that they're making it even more transparent, but thus far I have not gotten my hands on it. So if you're looking for a good deal, this one does have a zinc oxide, which is, you know, all of these zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, they're like these white flaky powders on a microscopic level. Some are pre-coated, some are uncoated, but you're basically dealing with a bunch of white powder, which is why it's not easy to formulate with, and it's also not easy to get across borders, because, you know, white powder looks like a lot of other suspicious substances, and the government tries to shut you down even if you do have proper documentation. So I get it, it's hard, I appreciate them trying. And although I still would recommend this formula, and again, any sunscreen is better than no sunscreen, it's not at the top of the list. Then we get to one that I love to love, and again, I have a skin affair with this one. This was my go-to sunscreen for so long. This is the Juice Beauty SPF 30 Oil-Free Moisturizer. Again, oil-free. My acne-prone skin and I used to be so afraid of using oils because we thought they would break us out. I was afraid of breaking out, I was afraid of eating the wrong kinds of food or stressing out too much or using the wrong pillowcase or not washing my pillowcase or using the wrong laundry detergent. And all of this stress and anxiety just manifested as hormones inside of my body which caused chain reactions and two more breakouts on my face. But this was one of the sunscreens that I found that worked for my skin. It didn't break me out. It protected me every day. And again, if you rub it in good enough, you can get rid of the white cast. However, as I've graduated to bigger, better, and less pasty sunscreens, I realized that this kind of falls right in the middle. It's really not as good as I used to think it was, but it's not horrible either. This is a wonderful SPF 30. It is made with organic ingredients, but especially if you have darker skin, if you have more melanated skin, these things just won't work the best. I love this formula. Some people have complained about the smell. I don't find it to be that bad. Again, I think it's because it's made with organic ingredients. It kind of smells like, what is that, grass? It smells like the grass that you sit on while the sun beats down on you, but doesn't harm you because you're protected from it using the SPF. I don't know, the best way I could probably describe it is grass or nature-y, but I think that even that is a little bit off. And again, I don't really care about the smell of my skincare products, I just want them to work. And this one did for me for so long. One that is comparable, and I actually wasn't sure which one goes before the other because they are so similar, is this one from Ren. I feel like this one is slightly easier to rub in, however. This is the Ren Clean Sunscreen Mineral 
SPF 30, and you know how I feel about these clean claims. But again, this is a halfway decent sunscreen, not because it's clean, but because it has good ingredients. And there are people out there who are so particular about clean beauty that they will not touch something if it has a paraben in it, or if it has a chemical name that they can't pronounce. God forbid! It might be natural and it's just the Latin name, but if they can't pronounce it, they won't buy it or touch it or use it because some blog on the internet told them not to. Which is again, why the internet is not a library. It is a dumpster. But this one from Ren makes sunscreen accessible because again, for people who fear those inky list nomenclature names, which again, they shouldn't, at least this is something that they can use and feel good about using. This one also states that it's a mattifying face sunscreen. I would recommend this for oily skin, but again, it's not the best. And I have other ones over here that are much more mattifying. Oh my God, look, we match. <laughs> again, their whole thing is being naturally derived, which probably means that they're actually less sustainable from an eco-friendly perspective. But again, when we rub this in, you can kind of see how it leaves this white casty film on your skin, and then you can kind of, kind of rub it in. Again, it is a 22% of zinc oxide, and so it does give a good amount of protection. And trust me, if you're snow skiing, or if you're swimming, or doing any activity in the sun in between, or even sitting inside indoors, because yes, sun UVA rays come through the window and still attack your skin, your dermis, the DNA within your skin cells to destroy them and try to cause you things like hyperpigmentation, premature wrinkling, collagen degradation, and yes, melanoma and other types of skin cancer. And no, we don't want that to happen. <laughs> So although this still isn't the best, it's a halfway decent one if you rub it in. This next one is one that I would recommend for more mature skin, and this one actually comes off a little bit more lotion-y. I would say that these two are very comparable from everything to the natural claims, to the amount of SPF that's in them, and 20 and a 30. Even the price point, very comparable, but this is a little bit more mattifying, and this one is a little bit more lotion-y. This one is also a coconut sunscreen. Uh, it does have that coconut base, so I would recommend this for more mature skin. If you have acne, you might want to steer clear. But again, if you do have slightly drier skin or you need something a little bit more moisturizing, this one just comes off as more of a lotion-y liquid. And so I kind of feel like I'm rubbing full fat creamer into my skin. That's kind of how I would describe it, both the feel and then also like the whiteness. And again, it kind of goes down when you rub it in, but like if you try to put makeup over this and you try to take a photo, honey, you're still gonna flash back. So is it a decent one? Yes. Is it better than nothing? Absolutely. But is it still paste city in your selfies with flash? Uh-huh. <laughs> then we get to this one. <laughs> My love. This is from The Ordinary. This is their Mineral UV Filters SPF 30 with antioxidants. And they love that they not only put antioxidants in here, but actually label it. Cause like some of these other ones have antioxidants, but they don't label it. This makes it easy for people to find and easy for people to understand how antioxidants supplement, you know, their SPF levels in skincare, you know, it can help in their routine. And even up to a year ago, I thought that this was an excellent sunscreen. I hadn't even tried K-Beauty yet. So that's kind of where my mental space was at when I was trying this. I thought that it was completely flash free, but honey, you gotta rub this in. And I actually find that this one actually makes my skin even a little bit pink. When you look at this, it's almost a little bit tinted. It's technically not tinted, but it almost looks like it. And at least on my skin tone, which is a Fitzpatrick type two, three, by the way, probably a two. When you kind of rub it in, it almost reminds me of a rose petal. It's very, very smoothing. It goes on nice, but again, it leaves a little bit of that white cast. And although you can get it to rub in, if you're trying to take photos or if you get wet at all, if you splash your face for whatever reason, this is going to look a little bit pasty and it takes effort to rub in. Is it bad? No. Is it inexpensive? Yes. Do I recommend it? Absolutely. But as I started trying some other products, is it like the top one that you could find on the market? Definitely no. If you are on a budget, this is totally fine, but it is not the best and I don't believe that it's water resistant. However, there is one that Dr. Dre again made me buy that is water resistant that I would recommend. This one I actually find to be very comparable to The Ordinary's. It's just a little bit more expensive and it's got a couple more claims to it because it is dermatologist tested and dermatologist formulated, I believe. This is the Clior Daily Face and Body SPF 40 UVA UVB Dermatologist Recommended Sunscreen. Not just tested, but recommended because think about 
that they could test it, hate it, and chuck it in a wall. But this is actually recommended by a derm, as opposed to just tested and chucked in the trash. It is cruelty free, it is water resistant for up to 40 minutes, it is for all skin types, including sensitive skin. And again, when we turn and learn those ingredients, we see a lot of these very, very basic, non stripping, very soothing, fragrance free ingredients. So if you have sensitive skin and maybe a little bit more money, highly recommended. Dr. J got me hooked on this. She said it was completely flashback free and there was no white cast. For her skin type, for my skin type, for anyone who's maybe a one or two or a three on this nice old Fitzpatrick scale, this is going to be totally fine and it will blend in well. But is it completely flashback free or white cast free? No, it is not. And if you are a four, definitely a five or a six on the Fitzpatrick scale, this will not be the best option for you. As you can see, it soaks in really nicely. It is more of a moisturizing sunscreen. I think this would be great for someone in their maybe 20s, 30s, even 40s. Needs a little bit more hydration to their skin, needs that all day protection, but still wants something that is non irritating and fragrance free. The cast is very similar because you can get it to soak in eventually. It just doesn't happen as quickly as I initially thought it did when Dr. Dre first recommended it and when I first purchased, bought it, tried it, and shared it with you. <laughs> then we start getting into some of the best ones. The best physical slash mineral sunscreens that do not flash back or have white cast and also don't have a tint to them because we've also got some tinted ones but if you're not looking for a tint and if you've got between 45 and 52 dollars oh my god I wish this existed earlier this is from Dermalogica which we've done videos on this brand before they have some products that just knock it out of the park and they have others that just leave you sitting there shaking your head and you're like y'all are stuck in the 80s this is one of the products that they have truly innovated with. It is the Invisible Physical Defense SPF 30. It is broad spectrum and they are not lying when they say this. This sunscreen works so well. It comes off as this white cream and again when you first put it on you're like oh no that looks like a dollop of daisy and I am not about to rub sour cream into my pores. And then you rub it in and you realize ooh, this is silky goodness goddessness. This goes onto the skin so well. It soaks in so well and I would say for very light Fitzpatrick types, one, two, three, even up to a four or five, this rubs in to be invisible. Absolutely amazing. For an SPF 30 that has 20% zinc oxide, this is phenomenal. Now again, you do have to rub it in a little bit, but it dries down completely sheer. And when I have worn this in photographs, it does not flash back. If you are a Fitzpatrick type six, I still think that you're going to need a little bit of a tint in your sunscreen. But if you're looking for something that kind of has that pillowy feel to it, you want something that can go over your moisturizer and under makeup, this is absolutely phenomenal. Your cheeks, your neck, your chest, even your shoulders, don't waste this on your body because it is expensive, but this is so worth it. Full transparency, it does have eucalyptus and lavender, which some people do not like, but those should not sensitize anyone in the sun and the way they are formulated into here. It doesn't look like they would raise any red flags or concerns for me, but you should be aware of that. This is the sunscreen that I am currently using. I love it. I've been wearing it every single day. This is my second bottle, and I'm not sure if I'm going to do a third bottle or if I'm going to switch to another one, but overall, white cast free, very good for me and very highly recommended, but it does get better. This right here is from Make Prem. This is the UV Defense Me sun protection fluid from Korea. And unlike many other Korean sunscreens, this does not have those organic slash chemical filters. Remember those chemical filters or chemical sunscreens are the ones that have raised a little bit of concern. They can sting the skin for a sensitive skin and they can also kind of irritate uh, open blemishes like pimples or even your eyes if they get in. This is one of the few Korean sunscreens that is actually chemical slash organic filter free. So it is fully physical. It is from Make Prem and it comes off very, very lotion-y. If you want glass skin, like if you want hydration, this is the way to go. It really melts onto the skin. It's almost like if you were to mix Elmer's glue and water, but it feels very, very light on the skin and it blends in so well. Again, with just a few swipes, it completely absorbs. It's very, very moisturizing and thin on the skin. So you probably will want to use a moisturizer underneath unless you have dry skin and you don't want that, but it's very, very lightweight on the skin. Now, one thing is that this says it's SPF 50 PA++++++++++. I don't know if this is actually an SPF 50. When I go in the sun, I feel as if this is more of an SPF 30 for me because I notice that I burn a little bit quicker with this SPF 50 rather than when I wear other mineral SPF 50s. And maybe there's some like legalities versus the Korean market and the American market when it comes to the FDA that I am not aware of is an 
SPF 50, I might call it more of an SPF 30, at least for my skin at this time, but maybe it was also the conditions under which I tested them in. And again, that is anecdotal evidence. That is my experience. That is not a lab certified study. I have not put these, you know, face to face with each other underneath controlled laboratory conditions with UV lights to test them out. So take that as you will, but it is a huge bottle. It is affordable. I got this one from Stylevana. I would highly, highly recommend. And it's, you know, lightweight, easy to just reapply throughout the day. I was using this earlier in the summer and I absolutely love it. Then we get to the best physical slash mineral sunscreen that is not tinted with no flashback that I could ever recommend. This one is from Dr. Sam's. And remember, she also had like number three on the list. This right here is like pillowy, billowy, beautiful, translucent powder moisturizer onto the skin. This is the Dr. Sam's Flawless Daily Sunscreen. It's a broad spectrum SPF 50. And can I tell you, this is a moisturizer plus an SPF in one. You don't need anything other than this. It goes on so silky smooth. It is moisturizing, it blends in, and it looks like nothing is there. It doesn't flash back in selfies. I would highly recommend it. However, this is formulated with nano zinc oxide. There is some fear about nano zinc oxide, about how it can absorb into the body, whether or not it's dangerous, especially if used appropriately and at high levels. I have not noticed bad side effects. I have read the studies on nano zinc oxide. I understand why it can be concerning for some, but I still stick with a stance that preventing skin cancer hyperpigmentation, collagen degradation is easier than treating it. And also any sunscreen is better than no sunscreen. This one is beautiful and she is a cosmetic dermatologist. If you're looking for something cosmetically elegant, this is it. However, it does have that nano zinc oxide in there. So please be aware. Then we start to get into the even better, dare I say the best. However, we are now looking at tinted sunscreens. So obviously these are going to flash back less because they have a tint in them, but there are still some that don't work as well. Remember this one, the Gossamere, Gossamere? These are the two tinted ones and these are actually fantastic because they don't flash back, but they still kind of leave this almost like spongy look to the skin, especially if you don't blend them them in immediately. They kind of have a little bit of this pasty feel to them and then like this spongy bubbly application. Are they flashback free? Absolutely. They are tinted. They do not flash back. They're also really buttery to the skin. They're kind of like this nice soft touch, which is a really, really nice feeling if you don't want to wear makeup and you want to use this just as a BB cream. I also love that they have two different tints. However, even when I look at tint number one and tint number two, I feel like she could have gone darker. I feel like she could have had a tint three, four, and even five, just to make sure that the most melanated of skin types are still protected. The darkest, blackest, most beautifully pigmented skin has a natural SPF of between 12 and 14. But think about it, 12 and 14 is still eons below the recommended SPF 30 or 50 that we're supposed to be using and reapplying throughout the day. So I do wish that these were better for people of darker skin tones and skin colors, but are they a half bad? Definitely not. Now look at this, who's this? Our old friend, Think sunscreen or Think Sun? Yes, remember this one? The very number one, the worst of the worst. This is not where we're at but this is a whole different story. This goes onto the skin kind of like a comforter. You know how a comforter goes on your bed, like a nice fluffy quilt? That's how this feels, and it absorbs so well. It is this beautiful, slightly pinkish toned pigment, so I feel like if you have a little bit of a red tint to your skin, you're going to love this. It's too dark for Fitzpatrick type one, even pushing it for Fitzpatrick type two, but if you're a type three or a type four, this is definitely for you. It's also only $9 highly recommended. And at SPF 30 plus, it protects you for a good amount of the day. This is a really nice tinted one at an affordable price that I can recommend. <gasps> But it does get better. Remember Elta MD and how we said that not all of their sunscreens were horrible? This is one of my favorites. This is one of my go-tos. This is the UV Physical Broad Spectrum SPF 41. It is a lightly tinted, again, chemical slash organic filter free, water resistant, 40 minutes with 
extra sensitive and post-procedure skin protection. So basically, if you have the most sensitive of skin types, you should be able to use this. It really goes onto the skin like a nice BB cream. It's almost like a replacement for the first layer of foundation. It is a little bit darker. I would say that even Fitzpatrick Type 5 could get away with using this, but it goes on so nicely. It absorbs well. It's slightly moisturizing without being greasy. Oh my God, it just dries down into the skin. It's a little bit more expensive, but this is probably one of my favorite tints. There's two more that I can recommend, but this is one of the best tints out there that just goes onto skin so smooth and it feels like a second skin. It protects you well. It goes on all day. I cannot recommend this enough. And again, Elta MD, what the heck were you thinking with this one? This was not it. This UV active was paste city. This over here is just like, it's on a completely different planet. This is like Elon Musk trying to colonize Mars in the form of sunscreen. And trust me, if you're on Mars, you're gonna need some heavy SPF. You're gonna need oxygen and water and a whole bunch of other amenities and things as well. But this will definitely be a necessity if you're going to Mars anytime soon. Then we have this one. This is the Super Goop Zinc Screen. For a while, this was their only mineral sunscreen option. And this is so nice. This is almost like a very, very liquidy formula. It goes on almost like water because of how liquidy it is. But it is such a nice tint that blends down perfectly. Dr. Dre got me using this around my eye area. Area. During the summer, when I was a little bit tanner, it was perfect for me. During the winter, I think that this might be a little bit too dark for my personal skin type, but as long as you're a Fitzpatrick type two, type three, type four, and yes, even type five, this blends in so well and it works so nicely. I cannot recommend this enough. It is a little bit expensive, but again, it has that really nice liquid touch to it. And if that's what you're looking for, this is where it's at. Now, what if you're not looking for that liquid touch feel, but you really want an SPF that kind of has that primer feel. You don't need to wear foundation over it, but it still protects you throughout the entire day. That's where this one comes in. This is the Kula Mineral Sunscreen, and I believe they have different tints for different skin types. And what makes this different is because, yes, this is a mineral sunscreen at SPF 30, but it's also a mineral BB cream. So this is specifically labeling itself as a BB cream plus skin protection. This really does have some of the best coverage, the best tint. And again, this feels kind of like a light, putty that goes onto the skin. It's super, super smooth, super, super powdery, and it's basically putting on a primer. If you're wearing this, do not wear a primer under your makeup. This is going to smooth over pores. It's going to work perfectly as well. And if you don't want to wear makeup, you could use just this and completely skip foundation and you would be perfectly fine. Do you see how it just like, it almost refines my pores instantly because of the formulation. It smooths over so nice. And this is a must. And again, it's definitely a very summery type of bottle. Sunscreen is not only for the summer. There is the sun. There is the danger of UVA and UVB rays year round. And sunscreen should not be a trend. It is your best friend. Make sure you have your skincare priorities in order. Now, the very last and the least flashbacky sunscreen that I know of is this one from a company in Canada. This is called the Cyberderm Sunscreen. This is the Simply Zinc Ultra Transparent Sunscreen Lotion with 25% zinc oxide. It is a broad spectrum SPF 50, and this actually has a really, really dark tint. This is amazing for people who have a type four, type five, or type six Fitzpatrick type. As you can see, it's a little bit too dark for me, even when I try to rub it in. I want to love it. I want to wear this all the time, but it is just not made for my skin tone. And if you have a Fitzpatrick level that is above three, this ain't for you. But for my beautifully melanated queens, kings, and gender neutral royalty, this is where it's at. This blends into the skin well. It sits on the skin so nicely. It protects you from the sun, and it also works with your beautiful melanin and with your skin tone. I know that it's a little bit more expensive. I wish that there were more physical slash mineral sunscreens for darker skin. Right now, the best sunscreens that I can recommend for the darkest of skin tones are things from K-Beauty or like Black Girl Sunscreen. But again, those include those chemical plus physical filters or they're just chemical slash organic. And if you are dark, beautifully pigmented, a melanated queen, and you want only physical slash mineral, 
This is the only one that I know of. And if I'm missing one that has worked for you, please tell me what it is so that I can update it in the comments or in the description or something and help people find products that really work for your skin. And that being said, out of all of these, I want to know which Fitzpatrick level are you? What is your skin type, your skin's main concern, and which of these sunscreens do you think is best for you? Leave it in a comment below based on your needs or what you like. And if you have other physical slash mineral sunscreen recommendations, please share them so that I can try them, test them out, see how it goes, and report back so that you don't have to. When it's all said, moisturized and SPF'd sunscreen is essential. Remember, SPF is your BFF. Prevention is always easier than treatment. And a lot of these things that we try to fix with skincare by using vitamin C or retinoids, etc., a lot of those things like hyperpigmentation, excessive scarring, collagen degradation, these can be prevented by using a good sunscreen. Even rosacea flares protect them and avoid them by wearing and good SPF. I hope that this video has helped you. Save it to your watch later playlist, text it to your friend so that you don't forget it. You can reference this video, you can choose the sunscreen that is best for you, and you can go on saving money, protecting your skin, and looking and feeling your absolute best. So all of that being said, remember to be beautiful both inside and out. There's another video and an actual playlist on sunscreen right here that you don't want to miss, and I cannot wait to see you in one of these next videos. <sighs> Love you guys! Bye.